Hello friends, my name is Uriel Emil, and welcome back to Reach the Peak, the show where I take girls of Horizon 3 and set them on one of the toughest challenges they can face, a tight, twisty hill climb course high up in Blizzard Mountain. Today I have five vehicles here for you as usual, and considering this is episode 44, and I don't really like the number 4, I decided it would be amusing for me to take a bunch of cars that I don't particularly like and stick them all in an episode, so this should be fun. We start with the 2014 Mini Countryman X-Raid, 307 horsepower, 516 foot-pound of torque, 4,299 pounds of weight. This is an A-Class car, 743 in PI. It is equipped with the snow tyres from Standard. It is the heaviest vehicle we have here today. Now, admittedly, this version isn't too bad, but the standard road-going Mini Countryman can get to fuck. I hate it. The new one actually isn't too bad, to be fair. They've sort of, like, redesigned it, made it more boxy and stuff. Uh, but this particular generation, oh, it's a hideous, hideous-looking car. Uh, it doesn't drive particularly well. Most of them are equipped with diesel engines, and most of the people who drive them are absolute morons. Admittedly, that you would well, you, you you can't be a moron when it comes to driving this particular one because this is the raid version of this car. I believe it competed in the Dakar Rally. I want to say uh, it's basically equipped with a three-liter twin-turbo V6 diesel engine. Uh, it is basically nothing like the road-going Mini Country, as most of these raid vehicles are. Uh, as far as it is a two-drive, it is fairly good. Uh, as you'd expect, of course, it's kind of built for this sort of thing, really, except uh, substitute snow with desert. Um, it is good, however, I will say it's quite slow. Uh, I'm going to put this down to A, the fact that it weighs quite a lot, and B, the fact that it doesn't have a lot of horsepower. Now, admittedly, in real life, what you would say is torque. And yes, that would be a valid argument. However, for whatever reason, in Horizon 3, no vehicle I've found yet with a diesel motor actually does anything particularly quickly. The Nissan Titan concept wasn't particularly quick. Uh, this isn't particularly quick. I think we've had a few other diesel uh, motored vehicles at some point as well. Uh, one saving grace of this is it has got extremely short gears. You can sort of see there, it basically tops out at the end of that sort of ice straight there. And that really is about as quick as the cars can get down here. Uh, it tops out at about 90 miles per hour from stock, I think. Yeah, uh, which is pretty crazy. Overall, it's an okay vehicle. There are better sort of raid vehicles and extreme off-roaders that you can drive in this game, but the, uh, the Countryman uh, certainly isn't as bad as its road-going equivalent. Next up, we move on to an Italian supercar that most people seem to love, but me personally, I've just never really got the appeal of it. It's the 2009 Ferrari 458 Italia, 562 horsepower, 398 foot-pan of torque. 3,274 pounds of weight is in this one class car, 897 in PI, one equipped with these snow tyres. It is the highest PI car here today. The 458 Italia, this is an interesting one. I don't hate it. I certainly don't hate it. I can't. It's, uh, it's a mid-engine Ferrari supercar. Uh, but for me personally, it's probably my least favourite of all of them that's been. You know, I'd much prefer the F355, the 430 Scuderia. Um, you know, admittedly they managed to turn the 458 around a little bit for me with a Speciali and eventually the 488, which is a car I don't mind. But for me personally, I've just never really liked the 458. It's never really, you know, looks-wise, I don't think it looks particularly... Uh, I wouldn't say it looks ugly, but I, it doesn't really appeal to me all that much. And every time I've driven it in a game, it's not really been particularly good. And in fact, I've always found the uh, MP412C from McLaren has always been a better alternative. And if you're asking me personally what would I buy from this sort of era of supercars, I would probably go for that. As far as driving up here goes, it's fine. It is quite a tricky vehicle to control. I would definitely say, uh, if you're going to be using a supercar for snow climbing purposes, and you want one from this era, I would probably steer you more towards the Lamborghini Gallardo. It has a lower PI with the snow tyres and it has all-wheel drive, so it drives much better up here. Um, but yeah, just other supercars are better at what this does. On the road, there's better supercars and, well, on the snow, there's better supercars. Uh, I guess you could call the 458 a jack-of-all-trades, but honestly... Uh, well, yeah, I guess that's probably a fair thing for it. There are worse handling supercars, but... This is probably one of my least favourite handling supercars, even on the road. I just don't think it particularly drives well. It, it, yeah, just nothing about the 458 uh, particularly appeals to me, which is, uh, I guess it's a bit of a shame, considering how much people really seem to love that car. Oh boy, we get to the main controversial ones of these episodes. We have two of these. We have a back-to-back -back comparison. 
First up, we have the newest Chevrolet Camaro available to us. This is the 2017 ZL1, 650 horsepower, 650 foot-pound of torque, 3,883 pounds of weight. This is an S1 class car, 863 in PI. When equipped with these snow tires, it is the most powerful vehicle here today and the torquiest vehicle here today. So, I'll get on to more of the reasons, oh, I, I don't really have reasons for it, I've never really liked the Camaro, we should get that quite clear. Uh, I will say on this particular model, my god is the new Camaro ugly, like, my god it's hideous. Like, I didn't particularly like the 2010 generation, and sort of from there they've just sort of made this car look slightly worse. Admittedly, I kind of like the 2015 uh, Z28, but this one... I mean, it doesn't look as bad as the SS, it doesn't look no way near as bad as the SS, but it's still not a pretty car, is it? It's very frowny. Um, it kind of reminds me of those blocky head things from Mario that you find in the uh, castles. Anyways, uh, as far as this car goes to drive, uh, this is not a good car. Uh, first off, it is oddly twitchy. I, I don't know why this is, but it feels extremely twitchy, uh, which you wouldn't usually expect from a muscle car, let alone a modern muscle car, but yeah, it's quite twitchy. It does slide, it is quick in a straight line, but it's just not enough to save it. I mean, you can see it through there. It's such a hard vehicle to drive the Camaro. It just, it's not good, and I'm not 100% sure why it's as bad as it is. Granted, you know, this is a track package, so on and so forth, for the Camaro, but yeah, not a good handling car. I would not recommend uh, this. If you're going to drive any of the uh, more modern muscle cars up here, I would definitely steer you more towards a GC350R or a Charger Hellcat. Honestly, they're better handling than this. This is just weird, and I don't like it. I do not like it one bit. So, from the newest Camaro in the game to the oldest one, we have the 1969 Chevrolet Camaro SS, 375 horsepower, 415 foot-pound of torque, 3,527 pounds of weight. This is an A-class car, 711 in PI when equipped with the snow tires. Uh, yeah, uh, even this classic Camaro, not a fan, not a fan of these cars. I've never particularly thought they looked very good, and for me they've always sort of seemed like a little bit of a sort of copycat I want to say to the Mustang like I don't want to say oh it's a copy of Mustang blah 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 you know GM did kind of invent the muscle car first with a GTO but the Camaro always seemed like sort of a watered down version of GM's usual muscle cars one that's meant to specifically target the Mustang and it's just always come across as a little bit of a lousy copy to me I've just never liked it to be honest with you no. Granted, I like the IROC Z, uh, that's a pretty cool car. I also don't mind the Catfish Camaros, but yeah, this, these uh, the newer ones and this older one, I'm just not a fan of them at all, they do not appeal to me. Uh, as far as this goes to drive, it also doesn't particularly appeal to me. Essentially, this is driving, this is like driving any typical American steel muscle car. Uh, it is relatively quick. It handles okay, it likes to slide a lot, it likes to wallow a lot, and it's hard to find traction in it. As pretty much every single other muscle car that we've driven up here from this sort of era. Uh, yeah, definitely, it's just a nothing car to drive, really, like compared to all the other muscle cars. There's no real uh, huge trait in this, you know, like the Charger Daytona has its really good handling, the Shelby Cobra has its the ridiculous amount of speed. The El Camino has its boatness. This has nothing. There is literally no sort of interesting feature of the Camaro when it comes to its handling or its characteristics. And that really just sums the car up for me in real life. There's just no real feature of this car. It is just a square box in which to add various levels of slightly disappointing drivetrains. Yeah, not a fan. I'm sorry, Camaro guys, but at least it'll be interesting to see sort of how far the Camaro has come over the years, I guess. And finally today, yes, I, I, I apologise. I, I sincerely apologise to any SX fans, but yeah, you've seen the livery. 
You've seen the body kit. Here we go. 1993 240 SXSE. 155 horsepower, 160 foot pound torque. 2,927 pounds of weight. This is a B class car. 666. MPI, when equipped with these snow tyres, it is the least powerful vehicle here today, the least torquey vehicle here today, the lightest vehicle here today, and the lowest MPI. It is worth noting, noting that with the body mods, this car weighs 12 pounds more than it should, and it has one more PI than it would, so usually it would be uh, 2,915 pounds and be uh, 665 MPI. So, yeah, I sort of, I saw this uh, paint job for the 240 SX a while ago and I was like, yeah, I can't not put that on. And I also sort of saw these body mods and they are ridiculous, especially with that wing. I, I would have actually used another wing if I had the option of another wing, but the silly shark wing had to be used. Yeah, this is an incredibly silly looking car. I'm sure some people are laughing and other people are extremely angry. So before you have time to uh, really riddle on that, we will uh, get down to the driving. And I actually like this car. It is slow, but it is kind of fun. Um, when I was driving this, I was very much getting vibes of the A86 that I drove months and months ago. I believe that, that was in like the first or second episode of Reach to Peak. Uh, I drove the A86 and I found that to be a slow but pretty fun car to drive and this really does give me vibes similar to that. It's not really surprising when you consider how similar the statistics are. Interestingly enough, this car actually has less power than the 1969 Fair Lady Z, uh, which I guess is a testament to how awful the uh, the American engine for these vehicles were. I'm sure it was reliable, but uh, 2.4 litre producing 160 horsepower, 4 cylinder. Yeah, nothing hugely exciting there, is there? Yeah, I've just never been a fan of any of the Sylvias, and unfortunately the 240SX was sort of the one where it's like, right, I guess it's time to get this one done. Um, and I've already used the S14, so I can't use those anymore. Ugh, S14. But yeah, um, I hate that thing, but yeah, uh, it, it's a fun car to drive, I'll give it that, just make sure you don't make it look like I did, because it's very stupid. Anyways, on to the times, the 4.5 is totally go to the 38th place with a 207.895, it is slightly slower than some Koenig's eggs and quicker than an R3 night in a 4 GT, which kind of really surprises me, the 4.58 did a, a lot better than I was expecting it to. Interesting to note, it is actually slightly quicker than the upgrade Vero, Hero version of that car, which I guess is some partly down to the fact that the car was a lot lower. The Camaro does surprisingly well as well, going to 72nd place with a 212.499. is 0.2 seconds in front of an Impreza 22B Horizon Edition, and 0.2 seconds down on a Lancia Stratos. Really very good time from that car. I'm not quite sure how it managed to do as good as it did, considering all the handling issues I was having with that car. The Countryman goes into 90th with a 215.302, slots itself nicely between the Jaguar F-Type R and the Jaguar F-Pace S. It is quicker than a couple of Skylines, it is slightly slower than a couple of Upgrade Heroes, nothing hugely exciting there. Moving down once more, we find the older Camaro going to 156th place with a 224.444, slightly quicker than a Fiesta ST and a Buick GNX, and yeah, pretty solid time from the Camaro considering it really isn't a particularly incredible vehicle to drive or anything like that. And finally today we have the uh, Nissan 240SX in a lonely 216th place with 235.789. It is a slightly slower than a Mazda MX-5 NA. It is a second quicker than the goddamn King Cobra which is something of note I guess. Anyways friends I want to thank you all very much for watching this episode of Reach Peak and until next time a farewell.